Dear students, you're going to need this video for the first transaction of Vinkman. I'm going to show you in this very short video how you're going to issue stocks that have a par value, which is this new concept that I'm explaining here. Some shares come with a par value, and this is the novelty, if you wish. Some other shares do not have a par value. And this type of share without a par value are the shares with which we have dealt so far. So I don't like explaining this concept of par value. It's quite difficult to explain because the par value doesn't really have a meaning by itself. The par value is just this arbitrary amount that has been assigned to each share when it has been issued for the first time. So this par value can be decided uh, between the two first owners of the company. So I decide that the par value of a share is 10. And my friend who's going to start a new company will decide that the par value of his shares will be one. So this par value, what you need to remember, it has absolutely nothing to do with the market price of the stock. The market price of the share is the price at which this stock will sell in the market. So the par value is something that does not change usually most of the time. We're going to study something different in chapter 11, but for now, the par value is this arbitrary amount that does not fluctuate over time. So let me show you how you're going to issue a share that comes with a par value. So let me show you first what you know how to do already. On this slide, there is absolutely nothing new because the par value is equivalent to the market price. So on this slide, when you don't have a par value, although when the par value is exactly the same than the market price, how do you issue a share? You're going to collect the cash and put it in a cash account, debit cash, and the amount that you've collected goes into the common stock account, which is an SE account. So here on this slide, there is absolutely nothing new. Let me show you on the following slide, the par value, how you have to deal with a share that is issued that comes with a par value. Here on September the 1st, the company has issued 100,000 shares that have a par value of two and they have $25. This is the market price. So the first thing that we're going to do when we issue shares that come with a par value is to determine how much money has been collected. How do you deal with the money that has been collected? By multiplying the number of shares by the market price, because this is how much money the company has collected, and the 2.5 million will be put into the cash account. Nothing new for the moment. Now that you have done this, what you're going to do is that you're going to split that amount of 2.5 into two accounts. A portion goes in the common stock account, and the, another portion goes in the additional paid in capital account. This account, additional paid in capital, is called APIC. So in this APIC account, what are we going to put compared to the common stock account? Well, in the common stock account, you're going to put the par. The par value times the number of shares that have been issued. So how many shares have you issued is 100,000. What is the par is 2. 100,000 times 2, 200,000 goes into the common stock account. So automatically, now that you know that there is a par, the par goes in common stock, and the difference goes in APIC. So how do you get to the 2.3 million that you're going to in, uh, record in the APIC account? By subtracting the 200,000 from the 2.5 million, or another way to find the 2.3 million is to may take the difference between the market price and the par value, which is 23, and you time it by the number of shares that were issued, 100,000. So 23 times 100,000, that is the amount that you're going to record in the additional paid in capital account. So that's the new account that appears in SE. <clears throat> the code of the account is as well an SE account. So for the moment, you know three accounts that appear in the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet, common stock, 
where you're going to record the par, additional paid in capital, where you're going to record the additional compared the additional part compared to the market price, and then you have the retained earnings. Now that you know that, let's have a look at the first transaction of Venkman. This is when the three owners each invested 40,000, for which each received 30,000 shares of $1 par value. So each investor, remember there are three scientists, they invested 40,000. So that means that the company has collected 120,000 that would be recorded in the cash account. Then you're going to take the three times 30,000 shares that each founder is going to receive in exchange of his 40,000 cash, three times 30,000 times the par, that's 90,000 that goes in the common stock account, and the difference of 30,000 goes in the additional paid in capital. So this is how you have to deal with transaction number one of Venkman. Cash is debited by the full amount. The full amount is split between, one, the common stock account, where you're going to put the par of $1, and the company has issued three times 30,000 shares, 90. And the difference is you subtract the 90 from the 120 to get to the 30,000. Let me as well show you the general ledger. In this general ledger, you have cash, which is debited by 120. And you have those two amounts that are credited in SE accounts.